going on, but behind it all are people, behind it all are things that are animating what you're seeing, but you don't see them because the curtain and everything blocks that from your eyes. <coughs> and uh, behind creation, behind everything that is made, is the reality of Christ because all things were made by him and for him and to him and <clears throat> they're all meant to declare the glory of God. And so um, we've been <clears throat> going through quite a few classes now, just taking a look at that. <clears throat> for those that are new here, don't try to learn physics. This isn't about learning physics. It's not about learning quantum physics, although we'll be into that today. <clears throat> it is about... Um, knowing the Lord. And within all of this, <coughs> within all of this, uh, there are the principles of Christ, of his life and of his nature. And so uh, I think, I think some of you might hurt yourself if you try to fi figure too much of the physics part out. That's not what we're, that's not what we're after here, okay? We just want to know the Lord, okay? But we're using some of these things. <coughs> and, um, and just a quick update for those of you who haven't been here. We, uh, we've discussed um, what I'll call classical, classical physics. And then... Classical physics primarily deals with <clears throat> the universe, the constellations, the galaxies, everything astro, astrophysics, right down to the atom. That's classical physics, right down to the, the atom. <clears throat> Quantum physics deals from the point of the atom down to the building blocks, the smallest building blocks of the universe, okay? Because everything's made out of atoms, doesn't matter what it is. And atoms are made out of, atom, once you leave an atom and you start breaking it down, <coughs> you're talking about, you're, you're talking about subatomic, subatomic particles. We've dealt a lot with astrophysics and the bodies of the universe. <coughs> Lately, we've been getting into quantum physics, which is subatomic particles. And an atom is made of electrons and protons and neutrons, and that's, <coughs> that's that. And yet, what are they made of? Well, they're made of quarks and gluons and on and on and on. <coughs> well, everything that I've just said to you, we've examined in light of Christ. Okay? So it's not important that you figure out what I just said physics-wise, but you're I don't know that you're fully going to understand where I'm going in this class without at least having a basic understanding that uh, now we're not dealing with astrophysics and the universe, we're dealing with quantum physics and everything. <clears throat> and, and let me just say this, which I have said in other classes. Uh, if everything is made of atoms, <clears throat> and everything is made of atoms, there is not one thing that is not made of atoms then, I'll say it like this for now, then atoms are the building block of everything else. So that if you have a big sun, it's made of atoms also. And if you have a constellation or a galaxy, it's all made of atoms also. So the basic building block, what is it that they're all put together by? What is it that is the common denominator and from that, <clears throat> we've been discovering the central, the center thing of Christianity, which is Christ in his nature, Christ in his life. That that is the central thing. Well, again, if atoms were the smallest thing, but they're not, because there are subatomic particles, and you, go, you just go smaller and smaller. And they don't even know 
Honestly, they don't even know what the small, that's what they're trying to find out. They're trying to find out what is the basic thing upon which everything is built. Whatever that is, it's going to be an expression of Christ in his nature and in his life. Not what he's done, not his doctrine of righteousness or do his doctrine of evangelization or his doctrine of family or his doctrine of this or that. It's going to be him in his purest form. And his, his purest form is not healer because before there, was a uni before there was a world, he was not a healer. There were no sick angels. <clears throat> and after it's all over with, you're not going to need healing, not going to need deliverance. We've been through all this. So we're, we're, we're trying to discover the central thing, the one thing upon which all other things are built. <clears throat> and if all of this declares the glory of God and shows his handiwork, then we want to we want to see Jesus in that. <clears throat> All right. Um, so let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And before I read the scripture here, let me just make a few statements. I can't draw it perfectly. But when I talk about quantum particles, these are subatomic particles. These are small, small. You can't see them with your human eye. No. You can't even see them with a microscope of any kind. <clears throat> and yet, we have technology based on these things. Okay? But if you examined a, a, a particle, and this is, uh, I can't do this, but I'm going to draw two particles because these, these subatomic particles, and you have to remember, they're, they're so minute you can't even imagine them. If I could draw those perfectly, the exact shape, in every way, that's what subatomic particles are. They are exact in their appearance. <clears throat> they are exact, and, and in fact, they're like, these two would be like identical twins. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, you know, how, you know, how do you tell them apart? There's only one way to tell them apart. Even though in appearance they are exactly the same thing, they, you can tell them apart by their behavior. Wait a minute, they're exact in appearance. Then how will you know? You can tell them apart by their behavior but not by their appearance. <clears throat> so, what is the distinguishable behavior from which you can tell a particle from another one? And, it, and, and I'm talking physics here, but I'm also talking in the Lord. The distinguishable thing where you can tell one particle from another is its behavior, and the particular behavior that identifies them is how they treat one another. This is absolute physics. I'm not making this up or whatever, but it is how you treat, you know, how, how you treat one another. <clears throat> uh, and in fact, I wrote how, how you treat one another of your same kind. Okay? Um, so, because of this distinguishable character, they have divided subatomic particles into two categories. Only two. Because there's only two basic behaviors. <laughs> and so, all particles, though they look exactly alike, though in appearance you could not tell the difference if you watched how they treated another one, how they reacted to another particle, you can begin to, to, to uh, see that. So they're grouped into two basic cate categories. I'm already running out of room up here, but um, they use this name C 
simply to describe the behavior. Now, they are subatomic particles, so they're all that. But they had to make up these names because they reacted in two different ways. So the name was bosons and fermions. And these, these, both of these names came from the people who discovered them, the, the physicists that discovered them. Okay. So that boson and fermions. <coughs> and the, the individual physicists, these two different guys, were watching and taking note of how they reacted in, uh, to one another. And they found that they fell into two different categories of behavior. <coughs> one is that a boson will fall into an embrace with other particles. This one right here will embrace other particles of its kind. And the fermions, they noted in their behavior, when it came to all other particles, that they would hold them at arm's length. The fermion holds them at arm's length. Okay. Now this is this is actual physics, by the way. I know you, may, hopefully you're getting something already, but it is amazing that God is seen in all of these things, and that when you get right down to the particles, they're only divided into two basic categories when it comes to behavior, and this is the the difference that they make. Um, I I'm not. This isn't a this isn't really a physics term. But bosons are huggable. <laughs> I know you might have thought that was, so I thought I'd tell you that there's no. Bosons are, are, are very huggable, and really, fermions are antisocial. You think? They are antisocial. <clears throat> and it is all of creation. All of creation is built on subatomic particles, and all of creation is built on either bosons or fermions, or the interaction between these two and what they produce. But everything you see subsists by these things right now. And depending on how they relate and what's going on and how many of them are in one location, this is how different kinds of matter and different kinds of things are formed. Um, let me, I, I just threw this together real quick. I mean, the reason why we started a little late was because of this. Um, what did I do with it? And uh, I, I thank Jennifer for bringing me a magnet because I didn't have one. A real good magnet has both positive and negative, right? Okay. So these are metal fragments. Most of you can see that I'm sort of trying to show you what's going on. But if you'll notice, this one, this uh, magnet is attracting all that is here and it's gathering them up. Now this one. If you, if you could put the negative side against it, you would literally see an invisible force driving those metal filings away. There would be a distance between it and them, right, with a magnet. There would be a distance, and there would be an invisible field that it forms so that nobody can see its arms reaching out and pushing away. Am I right or wrong? Nobody sees it going like this. 
You never see it. You never catch it because they look identical. What is different, and, and this is the same with electromagnetism, what is different is the field that they put forth that is invisible, unseen, unknown, and the only way that you could really figure out if it was a boson or a fermion is how things are either being drawn or pushed away. Okay? Uh, we were in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and let's look at verse 21. <clears throat> and the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of thee. This is, this is talking about the body of Christ. Okay? This is talking about how you relate in the body of Christ. <clears throat> and this, this is giving different examples of reactions, but one of this, the reactions here is that one particle is saying to the other one, I don't need you. Okay? And that is it's not just its doctrinal stand. Listen carefully. It is not just its doctrinal stand. It is the field that it is putting out. Invisible though it be, it is the field that it is putting out um, either to draw in, to gather, or to push away. All right. <clears throat> and only by careful examination of behavior would you ever discover the difference. If you only were looking at it, it, it may I say it like this, and that's not fully true, but may I say it like this, if you were only looking at it in a scientific way, such as, for example, we've said this before, but if you were only looking at music in a scientific way and not as a musician, and somebody strummed a guitar and played a chord, and let's just say they you know, played a A major seventh, which is a pretty chord. They played A major seventh. The musician might go, oh, you know, maybe even if it was a guy playing it and there was a girl listening and she went, oh. But if a scientist heard it, he would examine that and study that until he was able to tell you that that is nothing more than the vibrations going through the air of a, of a string or whatever that's vibrating and it's sending out vibrations and they would describe it in a science, scientific way that had no, no meaning beyond just the facts. Okay. Well, if you looked at a particle simply in that way, you would say, well, they're both alike and you would go away and you would never think any different. You would never know any different. But if you began to look at behavior, then, then you begin to see. And folks, we're always talking about the nature of Christ around here. We're always talking about Christ in you. We're always talking about Christ being formed in you. For us, it's never been about learning, you know, the, you know that magnet there can learn all of the doctrines. Let's say that it's not a magnet. Let's say it's just a piece of metal that looks just like a magnet. And it can learn all the doctrines. And it can preach good. And it can do things for God. If it's got a field around it that is shutting down certain things, that's pushing away, it cannot reproduce Christ in his body. It cannot. There's just no way. Why? Because its doctrines are wrong? No! Now, I've known people like this, and maybe you've known people like this. I have known people that could preach really good, but it was a little bit like when you came up to them afterwards, if you were a bosun, and you tried to hug them, it'd be a little bit like trying to hug a porcupine. You know. Ah! <laughs> oh! You know. And there's... Even if everything that was said was said properly and in order, the spirit which it was communicating was arm's length. And I'll explain fermions here in just a minute. 
at arm's length is a very good example, a very good picture of the fermion. It doesn't kill anybody. It doesn't chase them off. It doesn't run to the farthest distance of the galaxy. It just holds them at arm's length. Arm's length. And, uh, you know, I, I've been around people that say stuff like, um, uh, you know, Brother Randy, I really love you. And I really, you know, I really appreciate you. But you, you get a feel from them that they're not telling you the whole story. You know what I mean? And, and this may sound weird. And this, isn't, this is not a principle that is always true. But anytime somebody regularly comes up and tells me how much they love me, I know to be on the lookout. <laughs> I mean, that's why I never tell my wife I love her. <laughs> Just kidding. But I mean, you know, people come up and go, oh, I really love you, man. I, you know. And over the years, I've actually watched that process. And more times than I can tell you, once somebody got on the wagon of continually coming up and telling me how much they loved me, it wasn't two months, three months before they were gone. You know. Why? Because there's a feel that they're not saying. It's not their words. There's a feel they're putting out. And you can feel that. I mean, you know, people have always thought I was weird and more, you know, it's a leftover from my hippie days because I feel a vibe. But physicists think that the smallest particle of all is what's called string theory. It's a string that vibrates. Yeah, the smallest particle the, the upon which everything is built and that everything puts out a certain vibration depending on that vibration that's what you get well let me tell you words are cheap you know I, you know, I hate to use this story but you know, I went to, I was put in an orphanage. I was actually put in three foster homes before I ever went to the orphanage. I was in three foster homes, and then I was put in an orphanage at 11 until 16. And I remember, you know, and I'm, you're just a kid. You're just a, you're just a kid. I remember my mom coming and hugging me and visiting and saying everything, saying I love you, and then leaving. And that was regular. So much so that I got to the point that I didn't want to hear that you love me. I'd like to see a little action here, you know. What is the old saying? Uh, don't, what is it, don't? Oh, I can't think how it goes right now. It's the one about don't tell people how much you care unless you, sh you know, something like that. But anyway, <clears throat> the idea being this that, you know, you can tell people anything. And if, the, and if you go by sight and sound, and you can't feel in the <coughs> spirit, you can't feel in the spirit, you can't feel by Christ that is not moved by matter, you are up for deception. Yes. Right. Yeah, I just remember my little phrase, too. It's people don't care how much you know, and they want to know how much you care. <laughs> and in, in our realm, you, yeah, because you can go for years. You can pawn yourself off as something because you know a lot. But where is Christ? And I'm telling you, that's the question that the Father's constantly asking your life. Where is Christ? Now maybe he goes, there he is. Or maybe he goes, I haven't seen him in weeks. But that's the real issue with the Father is where is Christ? 
Oh, he's in heaven. No, no. He's, oh, he's, he's here in our midst, you know. Well, he's wanting Christ in you. He's wanting you to be the body of Christ. All right. So, another scripture along that line is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And the first one that we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 was a fer ferion. Fermion, I'm sorry, was a fermion, and that is, I ha I'm a particle, I have no need of you. This one represents the nature of Christ, and it's 2 Corinthians 5, 21, and it says, For he hath made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. What is, what is you know, what is this really saying? This is saying that Jesus joined to us in our sinfulness so that he could bring us into his righteousness. He's a boson. He joins to you. He initiates. He comes down. He comes up with the plan. He works the plan. He dies for the plan, and he says, okay, now just receive my word, just receive my heart, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So the words are not most important. Let's find the heart, because anybody can talk. Let's observe the behavior, and if you see the behavior of the Lord, he's always self-giving. He's always thinking of others. He's always putting others first. He's always ministering. He's always giving out. It's his, it's his nature. Literally in this, in this scripture right here, he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in union with him as joined to him. There's that spirit. There's that spirit. All of this declares the glory of God. And it shows forth Christ, and it's not random, and the creation wasn't random, and it's not just stuff. It is made after the image of Christ to declare his glory. And if we have eyes to see, we'll understand it. Yeah, Scott? And, you know, just to make sure we understand with these bosons and, and fermions, we're talking about, you know, th this has to do with either living as an individual or living as the body of Christ. Now, that can be seen in two ways. That last part of that can be seen in two ways. Living as the body of Christ, it can be seen as me living as the body so that Christ can manifest himself through me, right? Living as the body of Christ. But you see, that could still be a fermion in that, in that it's got, it's got it, I, me and Jesus got our own thing going, baby. Right? You know, we got our own thing. This is all, it's all about me and it's all about him and what we've got going on. But we're talking about here because, and why, why are we talking about the larger body of Christ? Why are we talking about not just living as an individual? And yes, you are an individual. You are a member in particular, but you're a member of something, the body of Christ. And why are we talking about that? Because everything is created from these subatomic particles. And it forms your body, and it forms, you know, on and on and on. Yes, you had your hand up? Mm-hmm. Now, we'll modify that a bit as we go here, but <clears throat> let's, let's turn to the book of Acts, uh, chapter 20. And I want to talk about these bosons here a little bit. <clears throat> I, was, uh, I was reading my Bible. <clears throat> Can you believe that? I was. I was. Praise God. I was reading my Bible. And uh, while I was reading it, I saw this right here. 
And uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you, uh, about four or five, four years ago, uh, I noticed some mornings when I got up and tried to read the Bible or the newspaper, I had a hard time seeing. As the day went on, I was fine, and then at night I was fine, and then I'd go for months and months and months and be not have one problem, and then some morning I'd get up. I remember I got up in Holland uh, that morning, and I was supposed to preach early. We started, what, 9 o'clock or something like that, early in the sense of it's still, you know, and... Uh, I'm going, I can't even read my Bible. How am I going to read the scriptures, you know? Uh, <clears throat> and, um, and so I determined I needed to do something. And so I got me some glasses, but I hardly ever wear them until today. <laughs> my study, and today I have had to wear them almost all day long. So I'm going to do something you've never seen me. In fact, my wife didn't even see it. I'm going to put these on. And uh, you be kind. That's for me, I'm not here. Okay, Acts chapter 20 and verse 1. And after the uproar was ceased, and after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them. You like it? <laughs> There's this big uproar. And uproar means what? Possible division. Fermions at work, fermenting everything. It's unrelated, those words, but <laughs> fermions causing an uproar, causing a division, causing a separation. And it says, and after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples. So here's a gathering. Wait, it's more than that. And he embraced them. And then I notice also verse 4, And there accompanied him into Asia, Sopater of Berea, and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus, and Segundus, and Gaius of Derbe, and Timothy, and of Asia, Tychicus, and Trophimus. There's a gathering going on there. Gathering of sons of God. A gathering by a bunch of bosons being pulled together. Both sons are sons. <laughs> sons in the image of Christ that have one main purpose. All right. And both sons in physics, they don't object to being clumped together, being brought together. It doesn't bother them. They like being around identical copies of themselves, which is. Christ, the image of Christ, the image of Christ, the image of Christ, Christ in you, Christ in you, Christ. They don't object to that. They, they enjoy that. <clears throat> and, uh, but this behavior is really based on one primary thing, and that is that bosons transmit energy or forces or power they transmit this is this is you know a, a particle you know a subatomic particle an electron an electron if you hook up electricity to it and put a long wire it shoves electrons through that wire and it transmits electricity or power or uh, light it can transmit light or and so when I use the word force or forces, I'm talking about literal, active energy through it. Now, I was, when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about Elisha when he died. you remember the story over in Kings? Elisha the prophet died, and they buried him. And sometime later, a long time later, I mean, enough, enough time where there was nothing left but his bones. They were digging a grave for another guy, and I guess they dug into his. I don't know. His bones were laying there, and all of a sudden, a marauding band of, I forget if it's Philistines or Midianites, but the bad guys, the guys with the black hats, <clears throat> come riding by 
on their horses and saw, you know, and, and, and so they saw them first and they went, oh, no, no, we got to do something. So they took the guy that they were there to bury and threw him in Elijah's, or Elisha, I'm sorry, did I say Elisha's grave? And he came alive. Power, uh, life, when he touched, it says when he touched those bones, the guy came alive. He transmitted life and energy. There was still a force even though he was dead. Because why? You're alive in Christ. Because Christ is your life. And there's something more flowing through you. Let's see, I, th I thought I had a statement. Um, their behavior of joining is based on a specific be behavior. They transmit, and it causes electrons to join together and shoot down this force all the way through them. <clears throat> okay? Uh, they transmit. They do not create the power. They do not create the energy. They only transmit it. They're not creators. They're conduits. <clears throat> um, the energy that's flowing through them comes from another source. Well, we know that to be Christ. Not us, but it is Christ. But they are so constituted that they will transmit this force to wherever it's going. <clears throat> um, and, of course, fermions do not behave in that manner. Uh, again, we'll get into it fermions and why their behavior is the way and, uh, you know, what exactly is that. <clears throat> All right, so let me read here. Particles that cling, which are bosons, lose their identity and begin to form into one sort of a new thing that wasn't before, okay? They literally start losing their individual identity and they start forming up something that was not before. Now, I'm, I'm just going to say it like this. This is not physicist talking here, and he wouldn't say it this way. But they almost form into a soup. Now, it, they don't turn into a liquid and that, but I'm just saying a soup is like a whole different thing. That's my point, not that they turn liquid. But they become a whole different thing. And um, so, uh, let's see, let's say this. One boson tr transmits energy, <coughs> or light or power or whatever. Just one. And this is how they began to discover it. One person noticed how an electron in an atom would, when, you know, there's these uh, three or whatever, how many electrons that are going around an atom, on the outside, and they, they're going around, 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 and they noticed that when they would get close to each other, a little spark would happen. And it, that's called a photon, for those of you who know about photon torpedoes. That's right. If you <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, it's, but it's an actual thing, and it is a little thing of light that, that happens. Now, if you've got a huge number, a huge number of bosons together, and you packed them together very tightly, they would transmit a light, just like they individually do when they get, they do that when they get close. Something starts happening, a spark starts happening between, between them. And this, this energy, it's literal energy, starts happening. And it's light. You pack them tight enough, and you focus that light, and do you know what you come up with? A laser. Yeah, that's where lasers came from. They found out that you take those particles and they make a little light. So let's try packing a whole bunch of these bosons together, and let's see if we can focus this light. And when they did, they created more than light. They created a light that could cut right through the matter and get, to get past the matter. I mean, it can cut metal. It can cut you in half. It can, I, I saw a demonstration 
uh, on PBS where they used a, a successful demonstration where they used a laser to shoot down an airplane. That's already happened. That's not science fiction. That's, that has already happened. Okay. Well, cut through metal, cut through the hardest metals, and all it is is everybody getting their light together and focusing it in one direction and focusing it, and, 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 and it takes you beyond matter. It takes you beyond this world. It takes you beyond what you see, feel, and taste, and touch. And that's, that's the power of these bosons because they transmit light or they transmit energy. They, tr they transmit light. They don't, oh, I, I, saw, I had some light on that. No, you, you never really did. You're just a transmitter. It slides through you, you know. But, you know, because we think every time God shows us something, we've learned a little more and we're a little smarter. No, you're not. God can wave his hand and it'll all disappear. You say, I don't believe that. Well, let me tell you, he did it to me. He literally, at a certain time in my life, I couldn't call up all of the things he had shown me. All I could just hold on to was I'm dead with Christ. And I rose with him and he accepts me because it, and that's enough. And I held on to that for about a year or more. And that was all I had, and then he began to bring it back. And he does that because he's not making you smart. He's the head. All of that is in the head. And you're joined to him, and the more you stay joined to him instead of trying to become smart, the more you'll have access to all things. But, but all things is what, what we call that in theological terms is being omniscient, all-knowing omniscient, all-knowing. But God is not trying to make you omniscient. He's not working on your life little by little. Learn this, learn that until you become omniscient. I'll deal with that later. Some of you are looking at me funny. So I'll deal with that when I'm in a better context. Uh, and maybe, maybe that'll be our next class here. I was really hoping to get a little further down the road here with this. Um, but again, if I'd read more and not talk so much. Uh, oh, I wrote, a, a laser is light that is so focused that it can cut through material things and move beyond it. Not be all bound up. Not be all bound up. Not, you take a flashlight and you shine it against that wall and what happens? Matter stops it. Did you hear what I said? A flashlight. You take a flashlight and shine it on that wall, and that matter will stop it. Why? Because the atoms in that wall are denser than the photons of the light, the, the electromagnetic ra radiation called light. <laughs> it's just a fancy term. And you take it and you shine it on that wall, and it cannot penetrate that wall. But you start focusing. You get to a place where you are so focused on the Lord and your light is so much more him than stuff you know about him that it becomes a force literally in itself and that wall will not stop it. You know, I mean, if I was a if I was a flash if I was the light beam from a flashlight, and I just went running at that wall, and that thing was out of the way, so I wouldn't run into the, the rail first. I would bump my head really hard, and I would say, "Why do I keep bumping into matter? Why is this? If she hadn't have said that." If this hadn't happened, if, you know, matter, all this matter still. Yeah. All of this earth still is moving us, stopping us, stopping our light, stopping the light that God gave us because it is not yet focused enough. And I'll be honest with you, it's not yet joined enough. 
I won't get into the fullness of that, but it is not yet joined enough. <clears throat> All right, so... Um, I've told you this one over and over again, but I love it so much, that's why I keep repeating this. They acquire properties they never could have, have as individual particles. I've told you this at least two different occasions before this, that this particle, when it, if it, be, if it becomes a boson, it will join with other particles and they f end up forming a system such as a laser. They end up forming a system or a, a, a reality that is beyond what they could ever do within themselves. And if a scientist and a physicist studied that one particle and examined and examined it, they would say it is impossible for that to do what it's doing over here. Well, that's what some people have said about you. It's impossible. They can't do that. They're, we've examined them. We know what they're like. They can't do it. They're, they're just, you know, this and that. They're just a few little things. Their particle is nothing. But when that particle joins with other particles and it's a boson, it has power, it has energy, it, ha it, it shines light greater, and it does things it could never do, folks. That's the value of becoming the body of Christ. Jesus in us can do well beyond what we could ever do, and people will look and wonder and say, how is that possible? And we will say, it is the Lord. We will say, it is the Lord. But, but one way he does that is he joins us his body to express him beyond my expression. Do you understand? I realize I'm in individual situations and I have to express Christ. I understand that. But I believe that there, and th this, is, this may just be me, I believe there's a light that comes from this place or any place, you know, that's gathered in his name in that manner that cannot be defined or understood. It, there is electromagnetic radiation shining out of us it's Christ and it's shining in a way that we could never understand because we're in the midst of it but it affects people and you know that many of you know that it affects it affects people around the world <clears throat> and then finally um, they have a invisible link the link allows them to coordinate there is an amazing thing that happens with subatomic particles. Once, if, as bosons, once they begin, to, they begin to join together, some sort of a communication link happens. Now, you know, I probably, uh, you know, I really thought I was going to be through all of this and on to my next area, but I I'll, I'll guess I'm going to be dealing with this in the next class also. So for you guys... Looks like it's going to be science again next class instead of anything else. <clears throat> um, you know, I'll just throw a few things out here. This is not for you to understand physics. It's just for you to think in terms of a communication that happens within the body of Christ. You with me? But, they, but within quantum physics, an incredible thing that they do not understand. They do not understand. It begins to happen between these particles as they begin to work together and flow together. They, there is a communication that starts happening that they can't explain, and it's as if one particle has the same mind that the other particle has and knows what it's going to do. <laughs> Isn't that strange? Well, in Christ, it's not, is it? We already understand that, and we say, well, you know, all of this declares the glory of God. We, we understand that. But isn't it amazing to see it in the things that he's made, that he put it right there, just like 
in the DNA of everything, he put it right there that we might understand that it is not about, sorry, that's my granddaughter back there, so I'm doing this with her. Um, it's, it's not about our own identity. <laughs> it's not about our own self. It is about, and when I say losing our identity, I am not talking about you becoming a zombie. I am not talking about you losing your personality. I am not talking about being melded into some nameless, personalityless blob. If you've been here, here any length of time or ever visited here for any length of time, you know that we got some personalities here. One of them just went off right there. <laughs> and so, I mean, we, you know, we have got a wide range. You know, there's, there's not a lot of clones of me, thank God. But I thank God they're not clones of some of you, too. <laughs> the, we're not taking away anyone's personality. In that sense, we're not taking away individuality. But in the sense of selfish, self-centeredness, we are losing our identity. Do you understand what I mean now? When it's just a selfish, self-centered me life, in the name of Jesus, it's got to go. And it will go. How? How? By the cross. Amen. I'm going to put this one over there. By the cross. Yes. sister <laughs> what <laughs> yeah well actually uh, I would rather go with your version than using that as ham for Jews because you know that's not kosher <clears throat> all right so anyway um Next class, we'll get into um, fermions a little more and see what they do and their reaction. And then we'll try to close out, hopefully, this part in relationship to bosons and fermions tonight in our next class. Take a break. We'll come back in about five, ten minutes. <laughs>